owner and principal interior designer of Soda Pop Design Inc. We'll be talking to you today about creating multifunctional spaces, which Billa talked a little bit about in her earlier presentation. Um, so a little bit about us is we do believe that, ooh, that works, okay, good. Um, we believe that all of our clients, that everybody deserves joy. So we kind of created a luxury brand that centers around creating that joy. So if you think about the most joyful thing that happens in your home, whether it's when you're coming home from a long day and your kids are running up and they pretty much bulldoze you back into the door, or if you're snuggling on the couch watching a movie or playing with your pets or whatever it is, we as designers like to hone in on what those moments are and create what we like to call moments of fizz, pun intended, soda pop, fizz, get it? Um, so they're the feel-good moments that like start right in your belly and they bubble up inside and then they just make you say, damn, like, yes, this is my home, as opposed to, damn, this is my home? Like, that's kind of, we want to steer away from that a little bit. So for us being joy-centered, um, we focus on how those feelings are physiologically created as well. And what that means for us and for you, it can be something as seemingly superficial as the paint color that you're putting on your walls or the patterns you're surrounding yourself with. Um, because those things actually release dopamine receptors in your brain that make you feel really happy and bring a smile to your face. So. These superficial things, though, also do need to be supported by the way that you function in the room. And if the way that you live, work, and play isn't being supported by, how you are, by what you're surrounded with, then it's really not going to do its job. We've all been home for a very long time. So it's nice to be around people. I don't know why this is not showing up. Oh, there it is. Um, and what we've been hearing from a lot of people is that they're just essentially tired of their four walls. Personally, our home, um, our dining room in particular, has now become a design studio for a team of designers, a podcast studio, an office for my husband who's in finance, a very different brain, um, and a school setting for four children. So the dining room, which used to house tableware and vases and the like, is now home to multiple laptops, papers, crayons, pencil crayons, scissors, you name it, it's all there. It's like a bomb went off. Um, so I don't know about you guys, I am a place for everything and everything in its place kind of girl. So you can imagine how the pandemic brought with it certain challenges that made me feel a little less than joyful at times at home. Um, so creating multifunctional spaces is really, for us, stems deeper than just having a place to store all of your things, absolutely. It's how those multifunctional spaces are also triggering multiple functions in your brain. So for us as designers, we like to focus on key aspects, which Billa actually did talk about a little bit in her earlier presentation. The first thing for us is neuroaesthetics. So this is actually the biological roots of the arts. When I first learned this, it kind of blew my mind because it gives everybody an actual scientific excuse to want to have pretty things. So it's like you can't say, oh, it's just pretty cuz. No, no, no. It's pretty because now when I see those things that I perceive to be beautiful, it releases serotonin, which is the happy bubbles inside, and being happy is good for our health. So bye-bye things that don't make us happy at home, and hello, let's revamp and think about this one more time. Um, I, I feel like for me also, and you'll see in this slide, these are kind of pictures of some of the past work that we did, right underneath there where it says we seek beauty and design because it's essential to what our well-being. Um, that catapulted me into a whole other area of thinking for design. And the picture underneath there is showing a double-tiered kitchen utensil drawer, which, again, as a busy mom with lots of little kids, I feel like that releases some serious serotonin <laughs> for me. So, I mean, if you haven't been made happy by um, an organized, clutter-free uh, kitchen drawer, then you're doing it wrong. Um, we also like to focus on salutogenic design. 
This actually refers to the promotion and maintenance of our health and well-being. So we're seeing a lot of this in our homes and we always want to try to incorporate it as much as possible because for us, mental health and wellness has never been of utmost important globally than it has now. So things as simple as people incorporating sit-stand desks in their home, to swapping that old folding chair for an actual ergonomic chair, or um, what is it, yoga ball, that's the word for it. The yoga balls, right? So you're getting your exercise in while you're working at home, to also looking for ways to incorporate saunas at home, steam rooms in the shower, or chromotherapy in the bathtub. Um, and then physically as well, if you incorporate things like a whole home HEPA filter to reduce dust and allergens and pollen, it all just goes a long way in incorporating and maintaining your physical health. Um, for us as well, things like wayfinding have a lot to do with this. So for example, if I was sitting in my dining room enjoying a nice dinner with my family and I can see all the way down the hall into the powder room with like a clear view of the toilet, I think that would bum me out. So really thinking about how we engage with our spaces and what we see when we're in each of those functions is really important to, to us as well. Um, biophilic design, again, biophilia. That was brought up in Villa's presentation as well, which essentially relates to nature by design. We are, they create what, I was actually talking to somebody right before this, it's fractals, and they're things that are found in nature, like snowflakes or crackling fires. We're just attracted to those. I am talking a lot with my hands. I have a European background, in case that's distracting any of you. Um, <laughs> it's all good. But um, yeah, so for, Fractals, which are found in nature, are actually things that we're drawn to. So things like crackling fires, the sound of water features, if we can incorporate those into our homes as well, um, and bringing in nature. And that can physically mean bringing in plants. Hopefully, in my case, they would be very easy to care for plants because I have a black thumb when it comes to those indoor buggers. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so nature by design and also architecturally the way that we would do it is again by an example like this where we just kind of maximize our views to the outdoors. We try to get more sunlight in and that can be through windows, through bigger doors, through sun tunnels and skylights, all of these things which will help and enhance our well-being. Uh, we've recently actually um, <clears throat> also had the pleasure and the privilege of working with a few clients whose accessibility uh, requirements stemmed a little further and deeper than issues that can be easily solved by selecting the right paint color, furniture, or lighting. A uh, lifetime ago, I actually worked with um, my old employer, who would use the phrase lipstick on a pig. It sounds crude, but it always stuck with me. Um, and she would refer to that saying when she was speaking with clients who essentially had ideas for their home which really wouldn't solve their deeper issues. If you or a family member, for example, is confined to a wheelchair either temporarily or indefinitely, you notice very quickly what does not work in your home. So having floor space for a wheelchair to easily maneuver from kitchen to den to bathroom to bedroom, all while keeping a good amount of storage space, creating multifunctional zones in each of those rooms requires careful planning. And in Toronto, for example, we really don't have that much square footage in some of the older homes in Toronto. So we have to think about how we utilize that cubic footage. So um, a lowered kitchen countertop in a kitchen would allow somebody to wheel up, prep dinner, and then with careful design planning with the cabinetry, they can easily translate that surface into a home office later or a place to study or a desk area, all while still keeping within the same footprint. Um, incorporating lifts and elevators in homes as well has been huge for people so that, again, they're not just confined to one level of the home and they have access to all different areas. Um, this example here is just showing a really cool, what I think is a really cool uh, design feature where essentially it acts as a console when it's not in used, 
when it's not in use, but you can pull it out, it becomes a bench, a desk, and still storage for all the things that you need. So thinking about that multifunctional furniture piece as well. Um, so next, does it spark joy? Marie Kondo, I don't know if all of you know about Marie Kondo. She's, so she's a Japanese, oh, you guys would know, Japanese organizational consultant whose essential method involves curating all of the things that belong to you in categories and then keeping only the things that, like our brand stands for, sparks joy. Um, my husband, kids, and I actually engage in a version of this activity randomly throughout the year because we have to, to keep our head on straight. Um, and after... Doing, going through that whole process and that purge, we do actually feel physically lighter and better. It helps us use our space. And not only that, but it frees up the ability to kind of have an empty drawer here or there where we can utilize it and use it for the functional daily items that we actually are using. Um, when the pandemic hit, our space between our den and our dining room ended up housing things like all the kids' toys and puzzles, the school equipment, the laptops, and being able to have drawers that were easy, easily able to uh, define for each kid gave each of them autonomy of use and clarity of purpose. And the idea was to try to eliminate some of that, mom, where's my, you fill in the blank. It's like the first time you hear it, it's fine, but like 7,000 plus times in, you're like over it. Any parents out there? No, that got nothing. <laughs> we can laugh, it's okay, it's cool, it's just me. Um, so for me, I really feel like the secret to creating the multifunctional spaces is thinking outside of the box of what those traditional zones are called. Like your dining room, for example, has a dining table that sits 30 inches high. That's the same height as a desk. We need to be able to kind of think outside the box and utilize those spaces the way that they make sense for us. Um, with more pressure on our homes to be more than just those traditional spaces, there has been um, a lot of push and a lot of trend to multifunctional furniture. So I've seen coffee tables that convert into desks and then dining tables. We've seen, as I showed earlier, kids' play storage or consoles that house all of your equipment, your filing stuff, but also turn into work tables, and even desks or bookshelves that convert into bunk beds, right? So kind of the sky is the limit when it comes to how you use those spaces. Even in condo design, we find that we do a lot of the mixed use bedroom office situation with Murphy beds. Um, so all of these provide us with opportunities for our homes to really maximize the function in each of those areas and bring joy back home to all of those spaces. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for your patience. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, like Billa, I will be here all night.